Hello, everybody. My name is Wesley DeBose. I am a customer success manager here at OpenSpace um, and have the, uh, the privilege with working with, uh, in my opinion, one of the best contractors in the nation, which is Balfour Beatty. Um, and today, we're going to be having a conversation with them, uh, just trying to understand the ROI of, um, you know, how OpenSpace has been able to deliver value to uh, this great organization. And I have the pleasure to be joined by uh, Bok Duong, who is a senior technology specialist with Balfour Beatty, as well as Gabrielle Matillier, who is a senior project engineer with Balfour Beatty. Um, Bok, could you start off by just telling us uh, a little bit about your role at Balfour Beatty? Uh, maybe tell everybody what those TBD letters means and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep, so at Balfour Beatty, I'm a senior technology specialist um, in the TPD department, which stands for Technology Process and Development. So we focus on anything from uh, on-site BIM coordination to R&D for new technology coming into our company. So our, our focus is, is really just on the BDC aspect of construction. Awesome. Uh, and then Gabby, would you mind telling everybody a little bit about what you do as a senior project engineer? Yeah, so um, as a senior project engineer, at least on this spot project specifically, um, I'm focusing on the interiors and it's really just essentially helping out the superintendents on the field aspect of the project and then also the PM um, on the more uh, office side. All right, well, we will go ahead and dive in. So. Uh, the first thing I want to ask y'all is, uh, can y'all speak a little bit about since bringing on Open Space, what has been really the greatest impact Open Space has had on uh, Balfour BD as an organization? So I can kind of talk to one side of this. Um, I think one of our greatest impacts by implementing Open Space has been just the process shift. So we used to have to take photos, go out on the job site, take photos, and then organize and um, distribute those photos, and and that's taken just an immense amount of time. And then once we've implemented open space, uh, based on kind of rough calculations, we've been able to save about 75% of our man hours in the field, uh, taking care of that process and making it more streamlined as well. Um, it also provides to be a very professional uh, place to, to, to kind of show owners and, and subcontractors what's going on on site. Awesome. Uh, and then Gabby, uh, anything you'd like to add here? I know you'll have some slides, so if you want me to advance, just let me know. Yeah, um, so another thing is essentially its ability to quickly access historical data. Um, so for instance, I don't know if you wanna pull up the uh, slide, but we have uh, post-tension cables in our decks, and it's a great way to go back and review, um, I guess, our pour after the fact, just because, um, for instance, a lot of our uh, subs need to um, core drill and um, scanning is not always as accurate. So uh, open space is definitely a great uh, alternative or addition to scanning. And it's also very quick. Um, it took us about 10 minutes to walk the slab, um, so it wasn't necessarily time consuming either. Um, and whenever you document the slab previously using other methods, uh, you know, open space was 10 minutes. How, how long would, it, would, would you say it would take you to use another method to do this? I mean, as opposed to maybe photo documentation, it'd probably take a little longer, plus if you want to actually capture the entire area, you know, there's definitely a lot more photos as opposed to open space where you can just walk and there's a lot more area coverage. Awesome, so more completeness of the documentation without having to worry about it being complete. Right. Great. And then, uh, can you all speak on this next slide as well? Yeah, so I guess one of the examples was at in one of our projects, uh, I guess a lot of other projects use it for this as well. Um, we essentially, uh, after the fact, we realized there was missing embeds and um, we actually gave our uh, subs access to open space, which was definitely very helpful because um, we were able to look at it with them and see if there's any uh, cables 
and you know if there is or if there if there is then we you know write an rfi if there isn't then you know that would it was definitely a time saver as opposed to or especially because the scanning we noticed isn't always as accurate so it's just definitely it was a good thing to double down and i think we had several examples where we needed to scan either for a missing embed or uh, just to core drill. And this has been definitely very helpful. And I know a lot of other job sites have used it for the same thing as well. And this, yeah, I mean, you mentioned, sorry, sorry. Um, you mentioned giving the subs access. I know before we gave them access, they were, they were coming into the office maybe two, three times a week trying to talk to Danny, right? Right, Gabby? Mm -hmm. And that takes up a lot of time. And then he said once he actually gave them a viewer permission, uh, that cut down, I mean, their time coming in to the office and uh, looking at that as well, where right. they, can, they can look at it and then propose an idea and just send it over. So mm -hmm. that is that was a huge help as well. Does that also assist in uh, relationship building with your subcontractor teams? Yeah, I would say so, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it definitely builds some transparency into what we're doing and how we're tracking it. So having having them have access to it, I think they, they appreciate that as well. Awesome. Um, so whenever it comes to measuring uh, whether open space is worth it or not, um, what metrics do you use to measure how successful open space is being for your organization? Um, so, like I said before, it's really the time saving. Um, I think we're going to touch on that ROI a little bit more later, but like I said, it's it's roughly like a 75% um, time saving from the previous method that we've been we've been using. Um, and it's not only the time saving on the on the back end, taking the photos and organizing, but when you are able to access information that quickly, um, it's an immediate effect and it's, it's almost like you don't even have to do an analysis on it. It's, it's, uh, it's a no brainer. And I think open space is a really flexible tool and there's a lot of ways that a variety of teams can use it. Um, so I'm especially interested to hear from both of y'all, you know, Bach being more in the BDC world and Gabby, you're more in the field world. What are y'all's favorite things about open space? Yeah. So, I mean, for me as a PE, I think what's great about it is that, you know, the work on our end stops essentially when the walk stops. So instead of, you know, after, you know, taking photos, coming back, uh, organizing it into your folder, um, it's, you know, you do your walk and then while it's uploading, you're able to do um, other important or high priority things that you may need to do. So your favorite thing about open space is uh, how little time you get to spend using it. <laughs> it's, it's very time efficient. All right. What about you, Buck? Um, So as kind of a VDC role, we work with a couple of different projects. So being able to see kind of all our projects at a glance, especially being in the office and our projects being so far and, and, and spread out, um, it makes it really easy for me to access uh, any issues we have on site or if I just want to take a peek at what kind of progress we're making. Um, another one of my favorite things about open space is the side-by-side -side BIM viewer with the walk capture. Um, this makes it really easy to go back in time and 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 check what has been installed MEP-wise. I know um, our MEP PE on this project has been looking at this and using this quite a bit to kind of track um, coordination versus field discrepancies. Uh, from the walk and the model. So it makes it really easy and pretty streamlined to look through and see what exactly is going to be above. And then when everything's closed in, um, it, it makes it a really useful tool to check what's above the ceiling as well. Awesome. What did, uh, what did the field team's access and visibility into the BIM model look like before open space? Um, they could only view the BIM model in our, uh, I guess, model viewer. Um, there is no access or um, ease of use really with traveling through the floor plan like it is in open space. You can click easily just like a Google Maps view 
and travel exactly to where you want it. Whereas in a model viewer, strictly, you kind of have to know exactly where you are in the building and know what grid line to go off of to, to, to check what you need to look at. So this just makes it a lot easier for our field teams to take a look at the model as well. Awesome. Do you see people using BIM for the first time, uh, you know, with this feature? Um, in some cases, yes. Uh, I mean, a lot of our PEs are the ones who are running this um, and taking the captures in the field. So when they're pulling up the BIM, that might be the first time they're ever looking at the BIM model as well. Awesome. And then I'm also curious to hear uh, kind of some other use cases of open space. Is there something that you really didn't anticipate being a value add from the system that you've discovered through using the platform? Um, one of the benefits definitely on multiple projects has been just cross-referencing open space in the future. So it kind of removes subjectivity from any issues that arise. Um, like I said before, it really does help build our relationship with our subcontractors because there's that, that that transparency of this is what we're capturing and this is what you're putting in and also with our clients as well. Yeah, just in terms of transparency, uh, a lot of our clients are not necessarily in the area. So for instance, for us, you know, our project is in Maryland, but we have clients, our clients are in California and also Georgia. So, you know, they only visit the job site once a month. So those in between periods, they have the, um, that access to that, um, just to see the progress. Awesome. So has that been a, uh, a tool that y'all have been use, using to win work and build trust with owners as well? Yep, open space is definitely something that we're including in our um, proposals and, and it seems that a lot of owners are receptive to, to having that on there and having some sort of viewer access on there. And I think, like I said before, it really just builds a relationship with the owner as being a transparent uh, general contractor. And then to, to wrap up, uh, you know, getting to uh, the biggest and most important question, which is your actual return on investment from open space. Um, do y'all have any sort of like financial number y'all have been able to come up with as far as, uh, you know, direct costs that open space has been able to save for y'all? Yep. So we have a couple of metrics that we looked at um, on a specific job and it's an ongoing job, which is about halfway done. Uh, concrete's topped out and we're doing framing right now. And on something like site documentation, like actually walking the site, taking pictures, um, and that whole sort of thing, we've been able to save about five man hours per week on on that, and that equates to about twenty thousand dollars of either savings uh, on those man hours or allocation towards another critical uh, project item that that person could be working on. Um, when it comes to like the image organization section we're able to cut our man hours about in half, um, resulting in another uh, roughly $20,000 in cost, either allocation or, or savings uh, a year on that, on that aspect. So that doesn't even take into account um, like how quickly we'd be able to access and, or how much time we would save accessing that data down the road um, rather than navigating through like a typical folder structure or trying to view that exact location that you're you're looking for. Um, and then the third thing we looked at was sort of like a destructive investigation. So looking at instances where using open space has actually saved us uh, a lot of time and headache and, and money as well. So I guess one example of that is uh, core drilling and PT slabs. So Reviewing open space has been a really good tool to use as, as a supplement or even like replacing PPR scanning. Um, so on this project, we've had five or six instances where we've used open space and those pre-pour walks that we've done um, to actually um, save on not having to GPR scan a certain portion of deck, um, which is about six or $7,000 in job savings thus far. And, you know, with ongoing design changes and, and potential for more uh, core drilling, I think we're going to save even more by the end of the project. Um, so just on this one project here, um, you know, from everything you just told me, what is the total ROI that you've seen from this project? 
So on this project alone, we're about halfway through. We're able to save uh, roughly about fifty thousand dollars in man hour cost, and those man hours can be uh, kind of recouped or used, you know, in more critical items of the project. Well, that is the end of the call. Uh, Bach and Gabby, I really appreciate and uh, want to thank y'all again for being on the call with us. Um, y'all are a very valued partner, um, and I'm really glad and proud to work for an organization that helps a great organization like yours become more efficient um, and, you know, help uh, build America. So thank y'all. Thank you very much for having us.